Hello, today I want to show you some stuff on uh, pixel art filtering and specifically uh, filtering of pixel art that is scaled, moved or rotated and stuff. So I have this little example uh, program we see running here and uh, on the left uh, side we have a sort of pixel art uh, that is naively sort of point sampled, you know, it's just a doing uh, whatever would happen if you just render this pixel art with uh, point sampling turned on. And we can see when it sort of zooms away that there, there is some kind of shimmering around the edges. It's, everything is almost shaking a bit. You can see it around the black edges here as well. Uh, and on the right hand side we see that none of this sort of shimmering at all. You see a lot of right now here. None of this shimmering is happening. And on this right hand side we use uh, some uh, filtering that is specifically designed for uh, filtering pixel art that is being scaled, moved or rotated. So the way I uh, ended up looking at this is because I was I noticed that in my game there was like this kind of shaking behavior and then some people uh, directed my attention to a couple of different uh, articles and shaded toy examples. I'll show some of them. Here is the first one that someone uh, sh showed to me and this is this cat here is zooming and on the right hand they do it exact show it sort of in the same way as I do. Uh, you see uh, the shimmering on the left side and side and there's no shimmering on the right hand side. And then people also pointed me to an article that uh, summarizes a variety of different methods on this. It's this article. You can use Google Pixel Art Filtering and you find it by Joe Ren. And this one goes through sort of the whole problem uh, and uh, a bit about how it works and why you get the shimmering and why you don't get it when you have this kind of filtering applied. And then it goes through uh, some different examples of these kind of filters. One of the examples is the this one that we looked at, but there's also a bunch of other ones here. Uh, and we can look at the, what I do in this little example here. This is achieved by applying a custom shader. This is a pixel shader and in the pixel shader, th this comparison is actually done in the pixel shader. So if we're on the right hand side, which means that the, the frag text chord, which is the UV of this texture here, if that's over 0 0.5, which means it's on the right hand side, then we will do this stuff. And here we run uh, this function called texture, which in GLSL is the function that samples a texture and it takes the texture that is fed into the shader, which is this cat thing here. And then it runs this function that takes the current UV and the texture size and then outputs a new UV that is meant to filter the sprite or texture. And the function I'm using here, the function UV cleanse that is defined up here, uh, I've taken that one from the article that I showed. Here it is. And this one also comes from a person who did a very nice example on shader toy. You see this one doesn't have the filtering and this one has uh, the filtering and here is just the, the bili bi bilinear um, filtering going on. Now there are a few extra things you need to do in your program that uses this shader for this to work. And I just show you the important part here. So I load my texture, nothing weird. Then I, on my texture, I immediately say that I want to use bilinear filtering. This might seem weird because, you know, on the pixel art, you, you would expect usually to use, you're used to having point filters and nearest neighbor filters and stuff always. But the UV transformation function over here that, 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 uh, that filters the UV depends on it being bilinearly filtered. The other thing you may need to do for this to work is that you might need to set your blend mode to pre-multiplied alpha. You will notice that this is a good idea when you have uh, two sprites overlapping, then there will be like in there, because there's the bilinear filtering is on, then you will have like a weird uh, overlap uh, in the uh, on the edge where you get un like ugly artifacts. And also you should not try to do this effect sort of in a uh, you know, full screen post effect pass afterwards. You use this shader when you're drawing the actual sprites, not as a full screen 
post effect. So the only other thing I know that you might need to do is that you might need to add like a one pixel transparent border to your sprites or uh, animation frames. Because if you look at this thing here, this is my game running now, and sometimes during some of the frames you will see like around it here you will see some weird lines that are sort of bleeding in from the other frames and this is an artifact from my sprite sheet the animation sprite sheet being packed together without any gaps like uh, so is this this is this animation and you see that these are all packed tightly so i would have to add some padding there uh, it's very easy to do that in a sprite when you are exporting your uh, animation this is the animation when you are exporting it uh, with the export sprite sheet you can uh, do some there's settings here inside the borders option uh, where you can add some padding and stuff to do all this automatically finally i would I guess i would say that doing things this way uh, is only required if you're doing a game that actually has scaling or rotation or moving of sprites if you're doing like a pixel perfect game which means that you render at, at in a tiny render target and then scale it up so that everything is always pixel perfect then you don't need to do this but you know doing this sort of modern way is people like doing that because you get the smooth camera motion and stuff and you can do all kind of funny rotations of pixel art some purists don't like it, but I think you can do very sweet effects with it. Yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video.